your perspective, what would you say, why is our research studies so unique, has become so unique as it has, and why is it so important to continue measuring the impact of in-store music, and especially for brands uh, to do it themselves, because you guys are providing with an amazing tool, but it's still the brand's responsibility, as I see it, to have somebody in their team that is learning all these perspectives, how to use your tool, have an understanding of the previous research, but also holistically figuring out what's happening in their stores themselves and to be able to play with it the same way they do with the visual side of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's been neglected even though we have we and others have shown in studies that uh, it has an effect on, on like, real sales. I mean, if it's only 1% or 10% or even over 30% that was shown in the GAN study, still there's, if, if you have a revenue of, of hundreds of millions of dollars, if you are a bigger brand with a chain uh, of, of stores or hotels or, uh, or restaurants, I mean, there's so much money to be made. And, uh, to be have, have the music being treated like like uh, like water or electricity is, is so uh, ignorant and it really doesn't uh, unlock the potential that there is in in background music and just like you say uh, every I mean of course uh, big enough uh, brand should ha have that someone being responsible and with that knowledge within their company but for all the others uh, we are there to help uh, also uh, to try to help even the, the one man shows uh, with, uh, with our product and it's very important to just keep on doing these studies uh, because uh, there's still uh, people are still uh, really uh, reluctant to take in even if we come with a study, it's just one study. We uh, it's just keep adding, throwing ammunition at them to eventually maybe uh, open uh, their eyes to to the effects of, of background music. And what other instant music research hypotheses uh, are you still curious to discover and, and conduct in the future? Oh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, well, w one area that has been uh, neglected uh, somewhat, I know that you uh, did a study on, on the employees, right? How, how they uh, perform uh, and how, how their performance is connected to background music. Uh, uh, but I mean, it's still uh, much to be uh, investigated there. Uh, the effects of, of, of the background music on, on, uh, on uh, staff. Usually, the only time you hear about that, uh, the media loves to talk about that every every Christmas, because then it's always uh, some uh, poor employee that gets interviewed about the uh, horror of hearing Christmas music uh, from October to January, and uh, they get sick and tired of it and almost want to quit. So, uh, definitely, that, that, that's uh, an important area. Uh, that we want to research and also create tools. I mean, if uh, therefore, I think it's important to develop our product so that the users can also, we like the, an, an administrator or the responsible person can create a pool of music. But from within that pool, then maybe the employees should be able to then select music that they like, so they still can influence the music somewhat, but they cannot ruin the experience for their customers. So mm. that is, yeah, I think it's very interesting. And another aspect is also like, because music, it's, it's uh, a global language and brands also figure out differently, like should culture wise, how it affects, because in different countries, even if we do somehow perceive music Similarly, I think culturally wise, it, there's a difference. It could be interesting. And, and regarding the, the Christmas music, I would actually say, artists, get out more new Christmas music <laughs> so we don't keep using the old ones or don't play like constantly the same. You can mix it with new and old and, and so on. Mm -hmm.